To effectively manage and improve your systems, you need to know exactly what assets are in your IT environment and have current, accurate configuration data. With an accurate CMDB, it's easy to understand your organization's IT environment, particularly in the areas of service impact analysis, asset management, compliance, and configuration management. In this demo, we'll show you how ServiceNow helps you populate the CMDB worry-free, monitor your CMDB integrations from a central dashboard, and then gain insights quickly and easily to support critical infrastructure and service decisions. To uplift your CMDB, let's start at, well, the beginning, populating the CMDB using Integration Hub ETL. The landing page shows all the existing ETL transform maps. If you haven't completed all the steps to create an ETL transform map, the map status will show as draft on this page. Let's create a new transform map. Here you're guided through the process in an assistant experience, showing you the steps you've completed and the next steps to follow. Our only unlocked step is import source data and provide basic details, so we'll start there. On this screen, the user picks a CMDB application or can create a new one. A CMDB application is simply the application that produced the data to be brought into the CMDB. For discovery source, we'll select manual entry. New discovery sources must be done in the platform. You can't create them here in IHETL. We'll name our new ETL transform map and pick the computer data source, which our administrator already created for us. Note that you can only create one ETL transform map for each data source. We'll click on the button Mark as Complete to save the basic details. Our next step is now unlocked, so we'll move on to preview and prepare the data. IHETL displays all the columns and rows for the source data we're working with. On this step, we'll create all the necessary entries for the robust transform engine, the CMDB import traffic cop, to create our CMDB data. On this screen, you'll perform operations to transform your data. The U last inventory date column needs to be converted to a date, so we'll start there. To create a new transform on a column, Click on the context menu icon on the column and select New Transform. On the New Transform panel, we'll click on the drop down Transform Type and search for Convert to Date. On the Source Timestamp Format input, we'll change the format using Standard Date Notation and click Apply to save this operation. Next, we'll need to perform some concatenations, creating new columns by combining two or more columns together. We'll start with U operating system name. Select the concatenation operation for this transform. Input 1 defaults to the column we initially selected. We want to concatenate the operating system version to this, so we'll put this in input column 2. On the input concatenate with string, we'll hit the space bar to add a space between the data inputs. IHETL automatically creates the output column name based on the input columns, but let's rename this output column name to something more meaningful, Operating System, and click Apply to save. We'll also do additional concatenations on U Computer Name, and U File System Name. Some transform types help maintain CMDB data integrity by cleaning source data using lookups to current CMDB data. Cleanse Hardware Model is one of them, which returns existing or new core company and hardware models. Let's perform Cleanse Hardware Model on UMake. Our transform type is Cleanse Hardware Model. We need both the make and model for this transform, so on the input model name, we'll search for UModel. We rename the output field and click Apply. The result is a string that has the manufacturer sys ID, manufacturer name, model sys ID, and model name concatenated with a triple pipe. Now that we have these four clean values for a model, we'll split the Cleanse Hardware Model column into four separate clean columns. 
Let's say we're done with preparing the data, so we'll click on the Mark is Complete button at the top. In this next step, we'll specify the CMDB classes that the source data will be mapped to. From the source data, we can see that some configuration items are Linux servers, some are Windows servers, and the rest are computers. We'll create a conditional class for this scenario. On the Add Conditional Class modal, we'll create conditions to be met to map the source data to different CMDB classes. First, we'll select the column to filter on, in this case, Operating System. If Operating System contains Windows, then our class will be Windows Server. We'll continue this process for Linux servers, and data that doesn't satisfy these conditions will automatically be mapped to the Computer class. Since all the rows contain a file system, we'll add that as well. Since we don't need a condition here, we'll just click Add Class and select File System. Now that we've specified our CI classes, it's time to map our source data to attributes for each class. Let's start with Windows Server 1. Click on the button Set Up Mapping. Here, IHETL shows the required fields to create a Windows Server CI. You can drag and drop the columns into the required fields, or use a keyboard list to search for the data columns to map the attributes. We'll map the remaining attributes quickly. You can also add new attributes, which are considered optional. We've completed the mappings for the Linux server, computer, and file system classes behind the scenes. We can now mark this as complete. Next, we'll define the relationships between the classes. First, we'll add a relationship. We select the parent, Linux Server 1, then the child, File System 1, and finally select the relationship, in this case, Contains, Contained By, and repeat for the remaining computer classes. Once the transforms, classes, and mappings are done, you can create sample results. This allows you to see if the data is being pushed to the CMDB as you would expect. IHETL displays key metrics for the preview run. It also displays tabs for each CMDB CI class created, relationships, and error and activity logs. If the results are not what you expect and you want to make revisions, you can click Edit Mapping for any of the CMDB Classes tabs, or Edit Relationships on the Relationships tab. This automatically rolls back the results and provides a clean slate to rerun the test as needed. Since we're happy with the results, we'll click on Retain Data. Our last step is to schedule the actual import to the CMDB. We'll click on Set Import Schedule, and then click on the button Set Schedules, which opens a new tab. Click New to create a new schedule. We'll give it a name and select Computer as the data source. When done, we'll go back to the Browsers tab where IHETL is and click on the button Mark as Complete. After the import runs, you can open the list view of the CMDB CI table and confirm all new CIs are added. This is a brief example of how Integration Hub ETL manages the import of data to your CMDB, enforcing rules to maintain data integrity while allowing flexibility to test and revise your imports if needed. The Integration Commons for CMDB Store App is the new central management point for integrations into your CMDB. Integration Commons contains a set of transforms and script includes to standardize the values stored in the CMDB by data integrations or changes. Integration Commons for CMDB provides a CMDB integrations dashboard with a central view of status, processing results, and processing errors for all installed CMDB integrations. You can see metrics for all integration runs or filter the view to a specific CMDB integration a specific time duration, or a specific integration run. The CMDB Execution Status tab displays metrics such as the total number of integrations and processed rows, integration runs actively running, daily statistics, and details about the classes that were updated. 
Click on the CMDB Integration Errors tab to see metrics such as number of import and integration errors and number of erroneous imported records. You can narrow down the scope of the integration runs included in the metrics on the dashboard by configuring filters on the right-hand side of the dashboard. Set any of the following filters and then click Apply. The filter settings apply to any metric with a filter icon in its upper left corner. CMDB Query Builder provides an interface through which a user can query the CMDB based on CI relationships without having to write scripts. The saved queries can be saved and scheduled, enabling dynamic reports to be included on dashboards for the IT team and other teams. We already have a few queries built using CMDB Query Builder. Let's explore the query, Tickets on Servers Running PostgreSQL. The CMDB Query Builder consists of a canvas where users can draw the query. The left panel of the canvas includes CI classes that can be dragged to the canvas. Multiple classes on the canvas can be linked by lines representing relationships. As you can see, this query contains two CI classes and a non-CMDB table, the task table. It will display all the servers that host PostgreSQL as well as any tasks such as incidents, problems, and changes on those servers. This query can help an IT team who may be planning a patching activity to get an overall status of PostgreSQL. There's an option to create a schedule which enables the IT team to get email notifications at scheduled dates and times with results of this query. Also, you need to create a schedule if you wish to utilize the dynamic reporting feature of CMDB Query Builder, which we'll explore in a moment. Let's run the query. We can see that the results contain several tasks along with the servers which host PostgreSQL. We will now create a dynamic report to visually represent the breakdown of tickets. We've selected a bar graph for the report type and grouped it by the task type. The report is ready and the IT team may add this report to their home page or dashboard. Let's now explore another type of query called Service Mapping Query, which can also be built using CMDB Query Builder. Service Mapping Query allows teams to draw a pattern consisting of classes and relationships between those classes and then returns the services that contain the pattern within their service map. Here we can see a query, Services using PostgreSQL. This query will return all services which have PostgreSQL instances in their service map. This type of query is useful for an IT team to identify the dependencies that an individual CI may have. CMDB Query Builder supports domain separation. This means that a query created in one domain cannot be shared between other domains. So, we've shown that the CMDB Query Builder is a great tool for teams to navigate the CMDB for insights to help IT plan for changes and upgrades without having to write complex scripts. In this demo, you've seen how ServiceNow helps you easily add CMDB resources while maintaining data integrity with Integration Hub ETL, monitor and maintain CMDB integrations from the CMDB Integrations Dashboard, and build infrastructure and service queries easily to improve decisions with CMDB Query Builder. For more information on CMDB, check out the CMDB Solution page at servicenow.com, as well as the additional resources on this demo page.